Hi folks, and welcome back to The Plot. Before I left the house today, I was so excited to come to The Plot and really get stuck in to a couple of jobs. And I've done that thing where you turn up at your plot and you start looking around, you think, oh, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. Oh, what about this? What about that? <laughs> and any plan that you had loosely starts to just kind of fade away. <laughs> and then you, your brain starts racing and you go, oh no, what should I do, what should I do? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't happen to me that often, but it's quite an easy little trap to fall into, I think. So what I thought we would do is just do a really quick little tour and I'll show you some of the things that I mean and some of the things that we're going round and round in my head just as I've arrived. And then I'm going to pick one thing. I'm going to prioritise something. I'm going to do that. It's going to make me feel better. I know it is because this is what happens. And then maybe I'll feel a bit more confident, a bit more calm and I'll move on to something else. I think that, to be honest, this is quite a common occurrence for me around this time of year. When we start to get into March and April, it's where it really starts to feel like, oh, I've got to get going, I've got to get going, because it starts to be the time where you can, you know, there are windows, planting windows that you can miss, and if everything isn't ready, it could start to just feel a, a little fraught, but it's really important to remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. There's still so much time, but, jobs, things that I came and I saw, I went, oh my God, there's stuff to do. I, the compost bays, you know, I was renovating these and this has just kind of fallen off my radar, to be honest. And realistically, these are gonna look like this for probably the rest of the season. Sometimes I think it's best to just prioritize and <laughs> sort of admit defeat. I did have it in my head that this would be a winter job. I would have all three of these rebuilt <laughs> with nice lids, all looking perfect by the end of winter. That hasn't happened, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, does it? I've got one bay now that should be producing really, really good compost, and that's good. That's really good. That's all I need for now, and we can slowly improve the rest over time. I had a really nice comment recently. It was from someone saying that they, th they think of allotments as a really nice long-term project where it's really good to see stuff slowly improve. And it doesn't have to be like a ground force garden, you know? Ground force, is that what the TV show used to be called? Where they did like garden makeovers. It doesn't have to be like that. You know, you do a little bit when you've got the time. And I just thought that was quite a nice thought. In terms of bed preparation, I'm, I, I am in a pretty good space and I do need to remind myself. I'm sort of, that's why I'm doing this tour, is to remind myself that it is okay. This bed is looking pretty good. One or two little clumps of grass, but not many weeds at all. The leeks, I'm still hoping they'll fatten up a little bit, we'll see. Um, it does just need a little bit of manure, just kind of lightly forking in to the top. I'm not gonna go full no dig on this because I haven't got enough manure to cover the whole thing. So I am as well gonna do some wood chip paths on this big one, just to make it a little bit easier to manage. So this is, that's one I saw and thought, oh, maybe I should do that. You can see all of this, look. <laughs> <laughs> all of this I've just brought in today, I've dumped, and this was kind of the plan. I brought all this cardboard down. Someone who Jess works with just had loads of office chairs delivered, so these are all office chair boxes. Um, and I've brought up a load more composting and manure, more cardboard stuff here as well. And so that's one thing. And as I arrived, what did I see? On the allotment gates, there was a sign saying that there's a skip in a few days. It's just a few days from now. So that was another job that kind of clicked in my head. I thought, oh, I should get clearing all the rubbish from the new plot and get that bagged up. And I think that is something that is gonna go higher up on the priority list. But yes, in terms of bed prep, you can't really see behind here, but these two beds I am really happy with. The, this bed is definitely starting to get a bit more weed growth. I'm not sure exactly why this is the horse manure I composted myself. <laughs> And clearly there's quite a lot of weed seed in that compared to the stuff I've bought in bags. Another job, more that I wanted to get done. There's a little bit down here that I've <laughs> sort of forgotten about, um, but I do need to sort that out. This bed, I have gone over a little bit, but it definitely needs manure. I need to get some goodness in there because once again, this is gonna be my kind of main pea structure. I think maybe peas, maybe beans. I don't know, I have bought some more cane, so I need to build a structure for the beans. And I was thinking I would do the peas up here because they don't get too high. Thoughts welcome in the comments. Another job, I need to sort out this strawberry bed. The greenhouse looking okay. Not many seedlings in there. Um, we'll do, shall we go in the greenhouse? Yeah, yeah, let's go in the greenhouse. So it's wonderful to have some stuff on the go. We've got some salads, some more salads, some peas in here, which are coming up, which is really good. These are old self-saved seeds that I didn't think were gonna do anything. 
And then we've got a mix of all sorts of different things that you saw me sewing very recently. Oh, we've also got down here some Cosmos. Very leggy. <laughs> These have been on the windowsill at home and I've brought them up today because they just need some light. So there's a little bit in here and there's plenty of chaos in my other greenhouse. I've got potatoes everywhere, <laughs> sort of chitting. Uh, <laughs> Not, not very organized onion seedlings. These are, the onions are probably ready to start going out actually now, mid-March. We've got some mild weather coming on the south coast. Loads more seed packets and more stuff from Grown Local, more peas. I honestly don't know where these are from. I can't remember, I just found that and thought, yeah, I should plant those. Broad beans, some flowers. These are all calendula that I, I'm gonna prick out and put in various places. Loads of, I think this is a tray of cabbages. Uh, <laughs> Once again, lots of old seed that I thought, okay, well, we'll just chuck that in, give it a whole tray, and it's germinated wildly. We've got some more, <laughs> more cabbages up here as well. Too many cabbages, I'm going to be giving some of those away for sure. Lots more onions. Steve the cucumber, still surviving. And so I think I'm in a pretty good place with the seeds, but it's mid-March. It's time, it's time to get going. There's loads and loads more that I can start sowing today, and I think that should probably be my number one priority. I've got quite a lot of time, so I'm going to get some seeds sown, particularly the peas, and then I'm going to get to work on clearing on the new plot ready for the skip. And just while I'm on the way there, I've had a few questions in the comments recently about the wildflower area and what I'm doing with this this year. And I've sown lots more spring bulbs under the trees. They're probably not going to flower this year, but that should be quite a nice showing next year. There's a few more things going on. There's a little clump over there as well. And the idea is I've got yellow rattle seed in here from last year. That should have overwintered. It's got kind of winter scarification and I'm hoping later on in spring, kind of May time, we'll see some yellow rattle germination. I've just got to keep the grass down. You can see the clippings there that I've still not got rid of. But the new plot, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be on here getting all the rubbish bagged up and all that kind of stuff. If you missed my recent episode, look at this. I'm so, so happy with this. This is a no-dig bed that I created and it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Absolutely no weeds in this manure. It is good quality stuff from the compost center. Might need to top this last one up a little bit. There was cardboard showing just through a little bit, but we've had lots of rain as well, which has been wonderful. So it's really kind of wet down all the cardboard and got it going nice. I want to get these kind of mulched with cardboard, little wood chip in the middle. That'll look really cute for the raised bed. But you can see there's just lots of rubbish. I might as well have a little go at tackling this because, well, it's an eyesore and it needs to go. All of this rubbish over here, various bits of plastic. I think as well, I am going to get rid of the bottles. I had a mixed, <laughs> mixed opinions on the bottles in the comments and part of me does want to keep them. They're a little bit funky, a little bit weird, but there's a lot. There's really quite a lot of them. You can see a lot more there. And the main issue is I use a petrol lawnmower and it's got a gigantic metal spinning blade on the underside. And <laughs> when I was mowing this, because you might have noticed, I have given this a quick mow. Still looks a bit wild, but when I was mowing this, I was getting a bit close to the bottles and thinking, ooh, I <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> Didn't like that. So I don't think those bottles really work. Uh, it's okay maybe if you've got a strimming line, um, but I don't want to be using those. I don't want to be using the lawnmower next to those. So yeah, it's really funny how many comments as well I had on my beginner guide series and on this new plot saying, please JB, just get in there with a strimmer, start tackling it, making it look tidy. But I'm pacing myself. This is all about prioritization. So I suppose really there's not actually that much rubbish on this new plot, but there is kind of various stuff scattered around. Look here in the weird compost structure, there's some stuff that needs sorting through, like lots of plastic things. I'll, I'll keep them if they still work, but if not, I'm probably gonna get rid. And honestly, there's probably lots <laughs> on my first plot, which needs to go in the skip as well. Things that have slowly been accumulating. I've got loads and loads of stuff in the greenhouse, actually, bags and bags of rubbish that have been accumulating ready for that skip. So, prioritization. First thing I want to do, get in the greenhouse, do some more seeds, maybe a little bit of successional sowing, but mainly stuff that is new and can be newly sown for this time of year, because it's not the end of the world if you're not going crazy with seeds, but I've got a lot, of, a lot more space now, um, and I, I want to try and get into a new mentality of sowing a lot more things. We've got all of this cardboard and everything, all the manure, 
for making new no dig beds on the plot, but that can wait a little while. We have now lots of space here and here that are ready to plant into. So if it gets to the point where it's like, oh, I've got seeds that need to go out, we've got space, I don't need to panic. I do wanna get some early potatoes in though. That is something that is gonna go right to the top of the list. And then we've got all this space over here. So prioritization, plant, tidy for the skip, plant some more, <laughs> prep the beds, make things tidier. So I've just spent, hopefully as you've seen, I've just spent the weekend with Liz Zora about her incredible homestead. You know, she's gardening on a whole new scale. And one of the things I, I really took away from that is just, she is so chill. She is so chill all the time, it seems. She has such a laid back attitude to gardening. And I turn up today at this little plot and immediately my mind starts racing and I've got all these things going on. And hopefully I've kind of given you a little insight into one of my coping mechanisms. You know, take a little deep breath, have a little wander around, enjoy the space I have really been enjoying as I've been going around and just prioritize, do the things that need to be done first. It's not worth getting stressed out about. So we're gonna sow some seeds, which is once again, a really Zen task, super chill and that will hopefully level me out even more. What I have done, I've just moved loads of stuff from this greenhouse into the second greenhouse. And what I'm gonna do is have this, this has only just occurred to me, but I'm gonna have this more as the potting greenhouse. I've got the nice potting benches here, lots more space. I'm gonna keep things like this in this greenhouse. So you can see I've left some spaces here for successional sowings of salads or maybe different types. That's the plan. Anyway, we've got some spinach in here, some iceberg lettuce and some butter leaf lettuce as well all year round. Butter leaf, butter head. You know what I mean? It's good. It's a good one. I like it. I grow all year round every year and it does tend to do quite well. Not magnificent, but a good all rounder. And what I did last time I was sowing seeds, I kind of ran out of time. So I, I helped myself and I'm glad I did. I left loads of seeds here for me to sow. Just as a little reminder to myself. So we've got lots of herbs, a couple of flowers, some beetroot and lots of peas. I'm quite behind on my peas. I've seen some pictures on Instagram of people who've got like winter peas that are podding already. I'm like, oh my, oh my goodness, how have you done that? What I have also done is got up a little sewing calendar <laughs> just to double check. I've not missed anything. I don't think there's any shame in that. I think that's a very good idea. The main thing I'm going to be doing today as well, middle of March, I'm going to put some tomatoes in. We've got, a, I wouldn't, it's dependent on the weather. So I've run out of space at home um, because I had to pot up my chilies early. Unfortunately, I really have run out of space to do tomatoes at home. We don't have a south facing windowsill, so they'll get really leggy. So we're going to start some tomatoes in the greenhouse. Hopefully they'll do OK. Like I say, we've got a bit of a mild period ahead of us. So I'm going to sow a load of stuff and then just show you what I've done. So we are back. A significant amount of time has passed and the weather has turned really miserable. So I was talking about prioritization and if I was clever, <laughs> I would have thought I'll do the stuff outside first and then do some seed sowing. But sometimes you lose momentum. I quite often lose momentum. I'm starting to lose momentum. I'm feeling like this isn't gonna be an all day trip to the allotment. So I think I made the right decision focusing on seeds. What I've got left to do in front of me, I've done absolutely loads, which I'll show you shortly. But what I'm doing now is the tomatoes. And I just thought it would be worth mentioning that generally I've just been using silver grow. I'm not really doing a potting mix. It's just going into silver grow compost, which is pretty premium. It's meant to be really good, but the tomatoes I have mixed in a bit more blood, fish and bone and some of this all purpose fertilizer pellet. Um, and the main reason I've done that is because I know that the tomatoes are probably gonna be in these modules a little bit longer than they would really like to. So I just wanna make sure they're gonna be healthy when I finally start potting them up and getting them moving. And I thought it would be worth talking about the tomato varieties because this is still all a little bit up in the air. I haven't made my complete and utter choices. In this, I think this is gonna be my module tray for tomatoes. Um, it's a little bit flimsy. I think realistically, I don't want to go overboard with the tomatoes. I'm gonna to be putting two seeds in each cell. So if all goes to plan, that is 24 tomatoes. I've got room for maybe kind of 12 or 14 at a push in the greenhouse. And then we've got lots of space outdoors for some outdoor varieties too. I wanna to do some plum tomatoes, which are a bit better suited to outdoor. So I'm gonna have a quick look through here. Then I'm gonna show you which ones I am going with. 
I've made my decision. Uh, how many varieties do we have here? Three, six, nine, ten. Ten varieties plus Crimson Crush at home. So we've gone for eleven varieties. Maybe not that crazy, but I do have a lot of chilli varieties, okay? So let's look first at the beefsteak. In a previous episode, I did talk about uh, some of the tomato varieties, and I'll link those in the description. But for the heritage varieties, I'm going to be doing Tamande, uh, which is an F1 from Grown Local, and the Orange Accordion from Baker Creek. Well, last year I did not have good success with the beefsteak, so I'm hoping this year they do a little bit better. For the plum tomatoes, or the kind of paste tomatoes, I'm going to be planting a lot of Roma and a lot of this tacky or tachy tomato uh, from Hoss Seeds. So they're going to be kind of disproportionate. I want a really good bulk of those for kind of freezing and processing. For the kind of the medium size, the kind of salad tomatoes I guess you get, I'm really excited about this one. This is Black Moon F1 from Grown Local. I'll put links to these in the descriptions and a little kind of a little description in the description as well. <laughs> That's what it's called, isn't it? The description box. What's it called underneath your video? Yeah, description. There will be descriptions of the descriptions in the... No! <laughs> what am I trying to say? I will put a list of what I'm growing with a little description in the description box below. And while you're there, please remember to like and subscribe. And also, while I'm talking about that, a massive thank you to my patrons, especially my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Bill, Louise, Tony, and not Andrew. I've been saying Andrew for ages, and your name is Michael. <laughs> for some reason, I've been calling you Andrew in like the past 10 videos, so I'm ever so sorry about that. If you're interested in having your name mispronounced across a series of videos, do check out the Patreon and the benefits below. Salad tomatoes, that's what I was trying to talk about. We've got indigo blue chocolate, the tomato black moon, which I'm really excited about, and as well the Saint Pierre, uh, which is a French heritage um, salad tomato that was given to me very kindly by a patron. Excited to try that one out. It's nice when they're kind of open pollinated and not all F1s. And then for the cherry tomatoes, we've got the classic Sun Gold F1, which really divisive. I'm really excited to try it, and I'm going to be comparing that with the Honeycomb F1. Not exactly the same flavour profile, but meant to be quite similar, and a lot of people much prefer this in comparison to the Sun Gold, and as well the Black Strawberry, which just looks incredible. So those are the 11 varieties of tomato. I'm going to get these sewn, and I'm going to give you a quick look at the rest of the things that I've been sewing because I have been very, very busy. The tomatoes are done. <laughs> this is a very, very exciting moment, isn't it? It really starts to feel like the turn of the season. And I think I mentioned earlier that maybe, mm, I mean, lots of people have started their tomatoes indoors, but maybe I'm risking it slightly. You know, we've, we're still quite a few weeks away from our last frost date, probably four weeks or so. So. So long as I keep my eye on these, keep my, keep my eye on the forecast and come down with the fleece once they've germinated, if there's a really cold night, hopefully they will be okay. But what else have I sewn? Because I have been really, really busy. And you might have noticed, if you've got an eagle eye up here, I've sewn the, what's it called? A drain pipe. It's a drain pipe full of peas. Now, I tried this last year and it was a disaster <laughs> because this drain pipe doesn't have any drainage, ironically. And I told myself, oh, I'll just I'll drill some holes in it, put some drainage in. Have I done that? No. <laughs> I don't have the drill today. It was time to do it, so I just thought, let's do it. And I'm going to keep a much better eye on the moisture level. It dried out on the top, so I would just water it. And what I really needed to do was dig around a bit and find out how moist it was under the surface. So I won't be making that mistake again, hopefully. Uh, down here, this is a bit interesting. Look at these, they look like massive onion sets. They are shallots, and I've never done shallots before. And I was gonna plant those just straight out, but it's still maybe just, it feels a little bit cold, a little bit too early. I don't think the ground has warmed up enough for them. And they're showing it signs of, they're just looking a bit gross. A few of them are getting kind of a blue mold. And I don't know if they're like potatoes where you can let the seed get really mank. Um, I'm not really sure. I feel like they're not the same as potatoes, but I've put them in there and we're gonna see if they start shooting out. If they look healthy, then I can plant them out. What else have I been sowing? There's just so much. Down here, I've done peas two ways. So I'm trying out the deep kind of root trainer-esque 
seed trays from ContainerWise at the back there. I think those will do better anyway because there's only seven, whereas in these tr more traditional flimsy root trainers, there are eight uh, rows, you know, so there's more compost in the back and each of these have got three seeds in. Last year I really didn't go hard enough with the peas, so I'm giving them, you know, they're really packed in there this year and I'm hoping it'll be an interesting little experiment to see whether or not, you know, the root trainers versus the trays. We'll see. At the back I've sown some sweet peas as well. I've actually got a few sweet pea flowers in that little grey thing. And then at the front here, these are all little beetroots. And I just found this little tray. It's quite deep. Um, I, I ordered yellow rattle plugs and they came in this. But I've got three different kinds of beetroot. Um, and as soon as that kind of starts sprouting and it's got its first true leaves, I'll try and get that out in the ground. I'm not the biggest fan of beetroot, but I did have some when I was with Liz and oh, she cooked it and it was so, so good. So I think it was a case of user error with my cooking of beetroot more than the actual crop itself. So that is super exciting. And then I filled out this tray, this salad tray. This has got kind of iceberg, I showed you this earlier, with um, loads of other little bits and bobs. We've got some holy basil. I've got a row of marigolds, which I've, I've really sown absolutely loads in there. So I'm using this more as a kind of seed tray, really. I'm gonna kind of break those modules up as opposed to planting them out. And I've tried the sorrel as well from that 9p seed packet. I'm pretty happy with it. There's absolutely loads that I've got sown today. Maybe, I think it felt like a little bit more when I was just showing you, I was like, I'm sure I've done more, but it took quite a long time. I definitely need to improve on my speed sowing. Let me know if there's anything you think I've missed, if you think I should be growing some other things or should have started some others. I'm a little concerned about the broad beans. I should maybe get a successional sowing of those going. Never done, as you know, beans, legumes, all of that, it's all pretty new to me. Only the second time I'm doing peas, kalima beans, and all the beans that I've got going, that is a first. So I'll be doing a succession of those soon, but I think we'll call it there. It's so miserable outside. I don't think I'm going to get much more done today. So all that's left for me to say is thank you ever so much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you again next time.